Welcome to this brief review of Plan Do Study Act linkages to process and outcome measurements. This is a review for anybody who's working on a design team about the linkage between every one of your PDSA cycles and the future. This is accomplished through linking your systemic process and outcome measures that guide the work of the team to the specific PDSA questions that scope how you're going to start and how you're going to know that you've made an improvement, not just a change. The context of this is the design team processes that we've been taught include an obligation to run Plan, Do, Study, Act cycles as one of the critical team processes. We've encouraged everyone to run weekly cycles and it's important for us to do this in order to deliver evidence of the work. The design team output includes documented plan, do, study, acts, and it's important for us to also think about the operational definitions of the measurements and the measurable improvements. Design team processes include running PDSA cycles each week or more often if that's possible. It's also important for us to recognize that running the process of creating a plan, do, study, act cycle and testing out our theories to get the evidence requires that we write them down and then we can share the evidence of our learning and our improvements. And we need to be focused on what are we doing and what is the outcome that shows that we've made an improvement. For an example, we've outlined the scope of a Plan, Do, Study, Act cycle for this particular change. We've named it the PDSA Measures Linkage. I'm the leader of this PDSA. What is our aim and purpose? Is that we're trying to link every PDSA to a measurable improvement consistent with a long-term supports and services environment of measures that we've attached as an example. What are we trying to accomplish in this cycle? We're trying to accomplish the linkage in every PDSA through the answer to the next question by my coaching the author of every PDSA. How will we know that a change is an improvement is the key question. This talks about the measurement and we're intending to see that each PDSA by this team and every team has an answer to this question. The last question is what can we adapt to result in improvement? We think we can coach each of the team members to edit their current PDSAs to link directly to the LTSS measures. We've said it before and we'll continue to say how important it is to improvement for us to run PDSA cycles of learning and improvement. They're fundamental and most design teams have been running cycles for months and learning and improving as they go, but some teams still struggle with not running PDSA cycles. In our PDSA template, we've included the three questions from the model of improvement. And that's part of that template for a reason. Those three questions help us scope. And as you can see, question two is all about measurement. Measurements of the results are fundamental. It's the only way that we know that we've actually made an improvement. It's how we know that the changes worked out as not just a change, which could be for the worse. We need to begin linking these measures to the overall metrics of improvement in the organization as a system. And in this case, I want to remind you that system isn't the technology. It's the service or production organization. The guiding council has five to six dimensions of system-wide measures that every PDSA needs to connect with in our example. 13 measures that follow are modeled after the Institute for Healthcare Improvement measurement model. As an example of these Institute for Healthcare Improvement measures, You'll note that there are system measures on the left, 1 through 13, that deal with things like the rate of adverse events, the incidence of reduced risk or harm, and end up 
with total cost per capita and equity as a stratification of system measures. You'll note that these fit into five general dimensions of quality that are noted in the right-hand column. Those include safety and effective. It's a large collection of them that are effective. You'll also note that their person-centered dimension might relate to your thinking about customer service. And certainly timely or cycle time is a dimension of quality that they care about. And they've also noted as efficient as a part of effectiveness. And there's also the final listing of the dimension of equitable, which in some parts of the world is considered also to be a part of being effective. So the plan in this case is on a weekly basis that each team member would share a current PDSA and make an appointment to revise their PDSA and answer question two. The, ex uh, the expected results are that at the next team meeting thereafter, every PDSA would be reviewed for coherence with the team's aim and be adapted with any feedback from the team. It's also important for us to think about how the results would be specifically measured. And that would be as a percentage of compliance with the linkage at week two with the initial definition of the sources of data. The guiding council and team would study the linkages and sources of data on every PDSA each week to adapt the plan as needed, and then decide when and how this improvement can be spread to other design teams. The due phase of the Plan Due Study Act cycle is where we perform the test, collect the data, and include the answers to these questions. Was the test performed as planned? How did the test go? What data and observations were created during the test? In the study phase, we'll compare what happened to what we expected. We'll answer these simple questions were the results studied as planned? What are the results of the analysis? How did the test work? And then is the change an improvement? Fairly simple questions, and all we need to do is answer them. In the ACT phase, it's our opportunity to decide after we've gone through the plan, the do, the study phases, we've gathered the data about what we discovered from testing our theory. And at that point, we decide to act by deciding we either adopt, adapt, abandon, or retest the change and summarize it by answering these questions. What did we set out to accomplish? What did we actually accomplish? What did we expect to learn? And what did we actually learn? We get an opportunity to describe the next steps and the planned PDSA cycles for the future. This is a very high-level overview of the connection between Plan Do Study Act cycles and their measurements of improvement and the overall measurements that are set forth for the organization to manage. I'd like to say thank you and I encourage you to feel free to contact me by email or by phone with any questions you might have. If I can't answer your call immediately, please leave a message with your number and I will call you back right away as soon as I can. Thank you very much.